close your eyes and stay with the breath. As the Buddha told his son, when you start to meditate, try to make your mind like earth. Whatever happens, the earth doesn't react. You pour disgusting things on the earth, the earth doesn't run away. You pour nice perfumes on the earth, the earth doesn't rise up to receive them. Try to make your mind solid. Because if you want to see the truth, you have to be here solidly. If you're running around all the time, it's hard to see. And if you're reacting all the time, what you see is your reactions. So be with the breath coming in, be with the breath going out. Now this doesn't mean that you don't make adjustments or you don't make changes. You can. It's just that you want to become a reliable observer. The Buddha doesn't teach you to be a doormat, just accepting whatever happens. But you want to be solid so that you can see clearly what's happening. And then if you're going to act in response, you want to see clearly how your action is going, where it's coming from in the mind. Is it coming from a good place or a bad place? And what effect does it have? Now to see these things, you've got to be solid. So keep your mind solidly right here. This way you can live in the world and not get blown around by the world. The image they give in the canon is of a stone column, sixteen spans tall, eight spans buried in the ground, so the wind blows no matter what direction it's coming from, north, west, east, south. The stone column doesn't even shake. That's the kind of mind you're trying to develop as you meditate. Because we live in this world, there's going to be praise and criticism. There's going to be pleasure and pain. There's going to be gain and loss, status, loss of status. Think of these things as winds, they just blow by. Because they're not really yours, either the good or the bad. When status comes, you can have it for a while. But you're not going to have it forever. And it can get taken away very easily. So the question is, once you have it, how do you make good use of it? The same with loss of status. There are good uses for that too. You can think about the ways of the world, gain some discernment, not get upset by that kind of loss. Think of all these pairs as winds blowing past. You pick up something good from the wind, but you don't shake. But most of us are not like stone columns. We're like sailboats with all the sails up. A little bit of breeze blows from any direction and we get blown along. People say good things, okay, the mind rises up. They say bad things, the mind falls down. You can't let the state of your mind depend on the words of other people. There's a story that one of the monks in Thailand tells. He was a student of John Cha. And one day he was in a bad mood coming back from his alms round. Someone had said something that had set him off. He got into the monastery and John Cha said, Good morning in English. The first time that John Chad had spoken to him in a long time, all of a sudden his mood changed 180 degrees. That night he had the opportunity to massage John Chad's feet. He was thinking what a great opportunity it was to massage the feet of the Kuba Johns. He was massaging one foot, and all of a sudden John Chad stamped him in the chest with his other foot and said, Don't let the state of your mind depend on other people's words. As a monk said, it's been stamped in his memory ever since. So stamp it in your memory too. Don't let other people's words blow you around. It's just a tiny breath of wind coming out of their mouth. But the mind can magnify it until it becomes a hurricane, a tornado. It wrecks things in the mind. And who did that? Well, you were the one who magnified it. So you have to learn how not to react to these things. See them, know them, figure out what is the best way to respond, but don't get blown around. And having a place to stay with the breath like this, as the breath comes in, the breath goes out, it keeps you anchored in the present moment. That's a good way to keep grounded.